Hello, everyone. We'll get started in just a couple minutes. Hello, everyone. We'll get started in a couple minutes here. Um, but while we're while we're waiting, it would be great to see in the chat where people are calling in from and maybe some of the websites everybody is working on. And um, you know, it would be great to, to, to see, you know, what everybody's working on. So um, if you have if you have a chance, um, you know, please be sure to drop it in the all right, shop scoots. Awesome. Yep. Be sure to drop in the chat what whatever you were working on and excited to take a look at some of the websites. Very nice, very nice. Um, all right, we have a lot of websites to, to take a look at, and we'll be looking at a lot of these websites. So again, feel free to drop in the chat what you're look what, what you're working on, and then we can look at some of these websites live. Um, so great to, great to see so many, so many websites here, people in Canada, um, all over. And I am going to promote, um, Sarah Pion, our special guest speaker, um, to, to be a panelist. And then, um, hey, Sarah, how are you? Good. How are you? Happy Friday. Uh -huh. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Well, while we, uh, while we wait, we'd love to hear your background and, uh, and, uh, you know, before we get started. Yeah, sure thing. So hi, I'm Sarah. I am head of web experience um, at my current company, and I've been doing conversion optimization for all different kinds of websites for the past four or five years um, from companies that have a small website a small amount of website traffic and they really want to capitalize on those who are on their website to companies that have, you know, tons and tons of traffic that want to really make sure that people are finding the right journey for themselves and incrementally uh, increasing that conversion rate over time. So um, really excited to look at all of your websites, give you all some tips. Um, and yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll get started in just a minute. And so everybody feel free to drop in the chat your websites and we'll look at as many of those as possible. Um, and we'll get started in just around one minute here. Um, but maybe while we're waiting, Sarah, do you want to take a look at one of the websites? I will give you sharing instructions and we'll try to keep it to two, three minutes a website so that we can get to as many of them as possible. Sure thing. Um, let's look at the first one I saw was, I think it was Medley Home. Whoa. Um, all right, here we are, first impressions. Um, love that there's a cool little pop-up here. Um, I would always say when you have pop-ups, try and add as much social proof as possible. So join for fun updates. You could say join the thousands, hundreds, whatever of, you know, furniture enthusiasts who get our emails every week. Something along those lines could help drive conversion rate for this pop-up specifically. Uh, one thing I really like is your headline here, like really describes what it is that you do. I think so many people keep their, their headlines as a place where they can offer sales or anything along those lines, but uh, describing what it is that you do. I really like that experience. Let's take a look first at your empty cart experience here. All right. So there's definitely a lot of room for opportunity here. A lot of real estate where you can drive people to your best sellers, drive people to your, you know, new arrivals, anything along those lines. There's just a lot of real estate here for you to kind of um, direct people to the right place. Let's take a look at sectionals and see what your category pages look like. All right, cool. I like that you have this visual filtering up here. Um, it could be interesting, you know, to add flags to some of these um, 
products that could be bestsellers, that could be selling fast, um, that could be, you know, more customizable, just adding some sort of call out to this collection page that will draw my eye to where I, I might want to go specifically. Um, I do like that there are multiple images here. Um, oh, and here we are. Okay. Um, first thing I will say is this, uh, these images down here kind of like take up a lot of real estate. Um, it could be interesting to short, to make these images like a little bit thinner. Um, and then I like that. Um, and then add like very, uh, pronounced arrows so that people know to kind of navigate through here. So you don't lose this real estate down here. Um, I think there's a lot that you could do with this real estate over here. Uh, there's not a lot of detail, um, but I do like that you're, you're, you're giving that shipping information. Um, add to cart could be a lot bigger, a lot more apparent. Um, and uh, the price is also a little bit hard to find. So I would kind of push things over into this corner where you have more real estate and maybe add some, some more product description over here. Um, like these details, you have plenty of space to put them over here where your product images, you know, still are. Um, and that could just help people make more of an informed decision. As I scroll, because you have a lot of information on here, having like a sticky button that follows me, um, that either brings me back up to the add to cart section or allows me to add to cart directly from where I'm browsing on desktop could be super helpful. Um, and then, you know, when in doubt, always test out color. You know, what, how could you draw more attention to this add to cart button? How could you um, make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit like a different color that kind of differentiates itself from, you know, your nav and the product images themselves? Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of what I have uh, on this page. Let's just take a look at the home page. All right. One thing that I would say your homepage is missing for sure is that, that level of social proof. Um, so, you know, adding reviews, adding media uh, mentions somewhere on this page could be super helpful um, so that people feel as though, you know, they're not the first person ever to buy your, your product. Um, I like these category pages here. I feel like you can make them a lot more actionable by adding shop now buttons under each of these. So people feel like this isn't just a display of what you offer, but it's a display of what you can go and shop for right now. Um, especially if you want to call attention to, you know, specifically sectionals, um, or, you know, offer some sort of sale, um, in the process, but yeah. Arthur, how is that on time? <laughs> that is perfect. Why don't we dive into the presentation here? And then, you know, we'll kind of scatter throughout the presentation, um, you know, Sarah diving in on some websites. So appreciate these. Um, yeah, we can definitely look at mobile too. That's a, that's a great point. Um, we usually see around 80% of traffic on mobile. And then I'm also going to look at some of the speeds of the sites very quickly. Um, and I can go over how to improve speed too, because that's a big part of conversion rates. So the agenda for today is how to use the edge delivery engine to be in the top 1% of the fastest websites in the world using the same tactics as William Snova to achieve the best possible results for your e-commerce store. So then we'll get feedback on live sites from Sarah. Um, and then we'll go over how to boost the average order value and conversion rates with a few simple fixes and how to combine predictive commerce with speed improvements to 6x your conversion rate can't promise six X, but you know, it can be pretty substantial and make sure to stay until the end and submit your site for free advice from Sierra. Plus there's a special offer. So the dirty little e-commerce secret is e-commerce is getting more and more competitive. Ad costs are going up and more stores are popping up. Amazon regularly does a 5% conversion rate on product pages, whereas e-commerce stores often struggle to break 2%. So how can, how can e-commerce stores close the gap and compete with Walmart, Amazon, and rising ad costs? We'll reveal why you must be doing conversion rate optimization. And if you do, then you'll not only survive, but you'll thrive. So make sure to stay until the end and we'll show you how we made conversion rate optimization nearly effortless and businesses are seeing up to a 600% increase in conversion doing it this way. So this is for any e-commerce store. Really, we're geared towards Shopify stores looking to have a bright future. And so whether you are unhappy with your current level of profits or happy with your level of profits, 
but scared about rising ad costs, regardless of what position your e-commerce store is in, you want to make sure you are in the know on this. So I'll give a quick introduction about who I am. I'm the founder and CEO of Nostra AI, which is a speed and conversion rate optimization software. Uh, we have people who work at our company from William Sonoma, Warby Parker, Fitbit, Target, GoodRx, and have bumped up conversion rates by a lot on, on many of those sites. Um, so a huge passion for conversion rate optimization. Our software touches literally tens of millions of visitors a month, um, probably, you know, probably closer to nine figures now. Um, and we even built this speed and testing framework for William Sonoma and, and now are offering it to Shopify store. So Sarah, I know you touched on your background earlier, but we'd love to, to hear about, about your world. Yeah, for sure. Um, I am like every day, essentially I'm working on web experience. So, um, my role is head of web experience. I've worked for, uh, and done a lot of commercial optimization for the last four or five years, just helping companies with sites ranging from all different kinds of sizes to really um, increase the overall conversion rate from B2B to B2C and direct to consumer uh, companies as well. So uh, super excited to take a look at your sites and just give you some suggestions on how you can create a better user experience. Awesome. Awesome. So the scary reality for e-commerce source in 2023 is competition is heating up in nearly every niche online. More and more people are flocking to Amazon at the same time that there's more and more e-commerce stores than ever. Ad costs keep rising higher and higher, and Google SEO rankings are getting harder and harder to achieve and maintain. So it's much harder to stand out, get seen, and compete. So if you're not doing this, your store is at serious risk. The one thing you must be doing in 2023 and beyond is called conversion rate optimization. Start doing this, you'll not only survive, but you'll thrive. So CRO is the process of increasing the percentage of conversions from a website or mobile app, typically involves generating ideas for elements and then testing those and then validating those hypotheses. So why do you want to do that? So let's say your return on ad spend is two, but you're able to bump up your conversion rate by, you know, 1% here. You got your return on ad spend to three, then you bump it up again or two and a half and you bump up the average order value and you didn't touch your ads, but your return on ad spend got better. So benefits are pretty clear. Rents missing out on customers prevents missing out on, you know, poorly, you know, it, it prevents missing sales from a poorly optimized website, it lowers your cost per customer acquisition, increases your ROAS, and lets you compete much easier, increases your customer lifetime value, and it lets you learn more about your customers and what they like and want. So there are two aspects of conversion rate optimization. There's what Sarah's going to be going over on a lot of these websites, which is the content. So it's what you're showing the visitor the images, the calls to actions, the designs, the plugins, all that stuff. And then there's a the site speed. Um, Shopify stores specifically tend to have slower websites and we can show you how to have a super, super fast website um, in 30 minutes. And so that's what I'll be showing you. Um, so yeah, those are the, the two main element, elements of conversion rate optimization. Typically you'll get your site speed to be good on Shopify. You get a five to 10% bump in conversion rates right away. And then it's a, you know, then you got to keep testing and keep using personalization to get the conversion rate up even more from there. Um, so why does speed matter? Here's a very clear stat. Um, you know, the average abandoned cart, and this is the same story over every single one of our websites. Average abandoned cart is around six seconds. The average conversion is around two seconds. As a result, speed is clearly probably the biggest impact on conversion rates in the Shopify ecosystem because you kind of naturally have a slower website. Um, so what goes into speed, um, you want to, the underlying things are what we help with that issue. The other stuff is what you want to do on your own. So that's compression. So making sure your, your images are compressed. You're not trying to have the biggest image, the biggest video in the world displayed to a, a visitor. You want to do caching. So unless you're using a software like Nostra, you can't do caching on, on the, uh, server side, which is where you really want to do caching on Shopify. You can do caching on the client side. So Shopify apps can do that. It doesn't really help that much though. To be honest, you want to do caching on the server side and that's what we help with that Nostra. You don't want to send useless information. Um, you don't want to send bytes back and forth that are user. You want to send, you know, useless. You want to send fewer packets is always better. So the less you have on your website, the better if you want to think about it that way. Um, you want to serve faster. So serving existing connection, um, you know, if, if you can serve faster, um, you know, you have the server next to the user and you've got high powered servers, that's better. Um, the speed matters. Unfortunately, a lot of Shopify stores point all the way back to Texas. 
Um, and so if you're in Brazil, it's not a good fit um, to, to be pointing all your traffic back to Texas and back. Um, you want to order your CSS images and scripts. So a lot of times people don't lazy load or they'll load in their pixels in the top where they don't need to be in the top. You don't need your tracking script to be at the top of the, you know, you can lazy load that in uh, or you can make it load at the bottom. Um, same with images, scripts, you want to lazy load whenever possible. Some things below the fold, don't load that in at the top. Um, you know, you can load in what's at the top first and then at the bottom of the page second. Um, and then you want to preload and that's what we can help with at Nostra. You know, I'll dive into more about what we do later, but we found with caching, serving faster and preloading, what is important with getting pre speed by around 40% on Shopify stores. Um, but before I dive into some examples of experiments run, I thought maybe we can get Sarah to give one more site that we can go over. Um, so Sarah, if you're ready to take a look at a site, um, we can hand it over to you while I uh, get the rest of the pre presentation ready. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and from taking Doug's suggestion, we're also going to focus specifically on the mobile experience here, which totally agree. Uh, mobile is super, super important on the e-commerce side of things. So um, kind of have the mobile view up on my screen here for Honest Pause. Um, one thing I will say is I'm on mobile. So, you know, screen size will vary, but the shop all CTA here is below the fold. Um, so I would say you could probably reduce even just the font size of your, of your header text here um, and really make sure that your buttons are wide um, and span the entire screen. You kind of want to make your mobile sites like fat finger friendly almost uh, where it's like super easy uh, for you to kind of understand where you want to go. I love that there are these collections. I honestly think that these um, these cards could be a little bit smaller and they could be sort of like in a two column um, experience just because no one's gonna come, especially on their on their mobile device and like really zoom in to see which uh, products are included in each of these categories. So you can save yourself some time by showcasing more uh, categories in like a smaller area. Um, and then also maybe even just adding an arrow to these categories so it shows that they are clickable. You can go, you can, you can browse um, on that side. I do like that there are best sellers and let's see if we have social proof, 30 day money back guarantee, love that. Um, yeah, and then these benefits as well, these could be a lot smaller um, in like a two by two sort of like column format. Um, and this social proof should be up way higher on the, on the page. I have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to see that you've been featured on in Forbes and on Fox and on Buzzfeed and, um, NBC and CBS, this little component, it doesn't take up a lot of space. It can really be, you know, right under that fold um, just to have, you know, break up your header and then your collections. Um, let's click into these collections. Cool. It could be interesting to, you know, again, add those flags of like, if anything is a bestseller, similar to what you do with sale here, or even the like combite bundle, the circle, adding those for bestsellers, or even, you know, showcasing how much money you will save when a product is on sale. So I'm currently doing, you know, the math in my head of like, okay, if it was 64 and I'm getting it for 58, like how much am I saving? What percent off is that? Uh, doing that math for your, for your buyers and putting, you know, 25% off sale or something Something along those lines in this banner could could help with that overall conversion rate on your sale items. Um, and then if we click into PDP, I like that you have you know your thinner product um, images where you can see the next image like as you scroll, so you see exactly how many images there are to look for here, um, as well as you know like the dosing almost based on size of animal. Really interesting to do. Um, uh, subscriptions here. So if you want to, you know, have more people sign up for subscriptions, you could have your default button be set to subscribe and save versus a one-time purchase and showcase the price of the subscribe and save first um, so that people can really see exactly um, how much they're saving. I will say it could be like a weird wonky uh, computer mobile experience, but I don't see the price here. Um, so that would be helpful to have you know, maybe right above 
the one-time purchase right under the product images or right next to the product name itself. Um, I would say bring the product name under the product images and add the price would be my suggestion there. Um, I like that your descriptions are drop down, non-GMO, FAQs, and reviews. This is, yeah, this is like a great example. I think one thing that would just, yeah, worry me slightly is that I don't see the price here. Let's see if it's, if it is there on desktop. No. Okay. Maybe that's a strategic move. I would say transparency is best. Uh, trying to showcase price uh, can just help make sure that people you get that add to cart and then check out completion conversion rate as well. And I think that you have a uh, like threshold for shipping. So let's see if I add to cart. I love that this, you know, status bar indicates that um, I qualify for free shipping. And there, here's where I see um, the price itself and upgrade to subscription, really interesting um, that you have that sort of showcased within the cart itself. I would say because you do have a little bit more real estate here, you could add, you know, pairs well with and showcase some of your like smaller ticket items in the cart itself. Um, so you can really increase that average order value, um, especially when people haven't gotten to that free shipping threshold yet. Let's see, I'm $48 away from free shipping. Let's see if I can find something that's cheap. I'll do bikes. Um, okay, this one is less than free shipping. Okay, there's the price. So maybe it was just weird on the other one. Um, let's add to cart and see. Okay, so this could be really interesting where if someone hasn't reached the threshold for free shipping yet, you could really have those like, make sure that you get your free shipping. Here are some products that could work well with you. Um, but I really like the width of these buttons too. And the fact that the add the cart button has like a different fill than the um, like one-time pur purchase selectors. I would even say it could be interesting to try like a side-by-side -side button and make these one-time purchases longer versus wider um, and see if you can even save yourself some more space on that side of things um, and have your add to cart button really just like very visible um, on that front front side of things. Um, Arthur, how's the rest of the presentation looking? Um, good. I can take back over now if you are, if you got a good sense there. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, so here are just some ex example experiments we've seen work in the past. So adding in trust, um, easy returns, free shipping. Sarah just touched on that. Awesome. Adding in the most expensive bundle up front decreases the conversion rate a little bit, but increases the AOV a lot, which has a monumental impact on revenue per user. Um, again, everything I'm saying here are examples of experiments to run. I'm not saying just go do this on your website. I run this as an experiment. Adding in trust at the checkout. Anything you can do further down the funnel will have a 10x impact. Anything you do further up the funnel. So checkout pages, add to cart pages, all that really, really um, important to be testing there. Um, adding in trust. Yes, very important. Did well, increased the conversion rate by 2%. But, you know, that's because it's on the, and doing that on the homepage is pretty, pretty substantial. Um, so adding in trust, listening to what your users are saying, adding in, you know, some text over the image can sometimes help. Um, gamifying the checkout. Again, look at how big that impact was on conversion rate. Um, adding in more trust at the checkout. Adding in trust again giving a very, very finite amount of time that somebody can, that they get the sale and giving them scarcity and saying, hey, you've got to act now because as we all know, people forget. Um, so that's part one. You could be losing a lot of customers based on the content, but the other thing is six speed. 90% of customers you could be losing for good. So according to research, 90% of customers will abandon online shopping experiences if page load time exceeds three seconds. And data shows that 70% of those consumers will never return to the website. To add insult to entry, on average, each of those shoppers will discuss their negative experience with 15 friends on social media. So optimizing page speed is especially important on mobile. Looking at how fast the website is on your, on your desktop, it should all be fairly fast. But what matters is how fast they are on mobile. Um, so you should have a low bounce rate, high average time on page, and a high goal conversion rate. Um, so all top businesses and online marketers do conversion rate optimization. The bottom line is CRO increases profits, increases uh, CRO prevents losing out on easy sales, 
and all top businesses and marketers are actively doing it. And not by, by not doing it, you're kind of sabotaging yourself and missing out on easier profits and return on ad spend. So how do we traditionally do this? It's through A-B testing. You know, test image one versus image two. However, split testing requires coming up with a lot of different variations to test. And traditional softwares like a Google Optimize cause a blip on the page every time somebody hits the, the site. So, you know, it'll essentially the decision making is by adding JavaScript, the JavaScript will hide the page for anywhere from 100 to 500 milliseconds while it's deciding show A or show B. What we have found is that that alone will decrease the conversion rate. Um, and so it's hard to have an exact test. Uh, you also have to manually test each image and each call to action one by one, which can take a long time to get your results. And existing software still requires you to do all those testing and you know be in the driver's seat nonstop. Testing solutions can take day to, days to set up. And let's say you run a test in December and you're selling beach equipment and you, you card code in that a very relaxed messaging is what leads to the highest conversion rate. But then the summer comes along and that's hard coded in and maybe a more urgent messaging would have made sense um, for, for the summer. And so it's a static page, so it doesn't stay up to date as user sentiment changes. And it can't auto optimize as new audiences come to the page. So in short, it's difficult for businesses to split test affordably without a massive time sink. And traditional options lead to out of date results right away. So that's part one of CRO. What we built at Nostra is essentially, instead of having to manually A-B test every single variation, we essentially allow you to upload all your different images, your calls to actions, your headlines, whatever you'd want to test out. And then we will essentially auto-optimize, kind of automatically run A-B tests on the site with the content that is given to us and say, oh, people who come in through Flor in Florida through this Facebook ad should see this image and this call to action and this headline. And people who are 22 and live in, in San Francisco should see X, Y, and Z. And we will construct that page on the edge. So not adding any time to the page load and display it to the visitor in real time. And let's say the sentiment changes over time. Nostra will stay up to date and kind of keep shifting the traffic with the, the visitor sentiment. So that's part one. Part two is speed. You know, we act, we've, we've discovered, especially in the Shopify ecosystem, speed is crucial. Um, According to Amazon and Walmart, and I think us as well, is similar to what we've seen, for every 100 milliseconds that latency is produced, not just conversion rate, but an entire revenue jumps by 1%. And custom solutions to do that are very expensive, like going headless. It can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. So let's take Nostra out of the picture. Let's see how would you get a super fast website without us. Um, what you would do is you would transition to what's called a headless CMS. Um, and what that does is it requires you know, essentially buying a content management system. And so that can cost tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you've got to hire a front end, back end team, a DevOps team. And you, you, you know, the average cost is two and a half million dollars to go headless. And then every time you want to change something on your website, it's not just a WYSIWYG that you're changing one thing or the next. It's a full on, you know, talk to a developer if you want to change an image um, or you want to change your design a little bit. Um, and so it can be a headache and you don't get all the, any of the built-in apps that you get with Shopify um, and can be very, very expensive. What we do at Nostra, one DNS change, and then amazingly, you have a super fast website. So what we found is we use predictive commerce. So that's an AV, automated AV testing tool where we upload different images, calls to actions, headlines, and then one visitor might see image one and call to action two, and another visitor might see image three and call to action one. Um, and based on whatever is most likely to increase the revenue per user. Um, no blips, auto optimization makes it easy. We can generate the content for you. There's no manual split testing required, and it's always optimized against audience and user sentiment changes. It's always working 24 seven to maximize conversions. And then speed wise, what we talked about um, at the beginning of the presentation is how to make a fast website. Um, there are certain things that you have to do on your end that Nostra doesn't help with. So that's compressing images, ordering your CSS and JavaScript and all that stuff. But when it comes time for kind of making sure your infrastructure and your caching is top notch, we just make one DNS change and you have the same speed as a headless CMS, but you don't have to write a single line of code, uh, which is pretty, pretty impressive in my mind. Um, 
And that alone increases the conversion rate on websites by around five to 10%, you know, in a day or two after you set it up, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, especially if you're an international company, um, that, that it also makes, you know, your, your conversion rate increase. We've seen like 40 to 50% bumps in conversion rate uh, for companies based outside of the U.S. Um, so it's not hard to understand why top e-commerce stores would use Nostra for higher click-through rates, more sales, no blips, more options, a seamless, smooth customer experience on all steps. And this combination preps e-commerce stores for maximum conversions, essential as more stores pop up and the economy gets worse and worse. So you get a higher return on ad spend, more sales and profits, no need to create and test different pages, no need to hire anyone to do it for you, and insurance that you're not leaking profits in hard economics times, insurance that you're not losing sales to better optimize competitors. So the combination works with no manual split testing needed. We use AI to auto-optimize the site. And this means any business owner with history plugged in gets all the predictive commerce benefits and all the speed, you know, and you don't really have to do much. And so you don't, it's literally four steps. So we install Nostra on your site. We immediately make the site fast. We have a CRO call with someone like Sarah or Sarah herself, um, where she will give you all these different experiments to run. And then, you know, we go to work right away and increase conversion rates right away. And that's it. Um, so instead of the demos, uh, I'm going to hand it back to Sarah to just give some tips on conversion rate optimization, maybe do another site here before we get back to the presentation. Awesome. I have one pulled up. Actually, I was navigating it while we were chatting, so I'll go back to the homepage really quick. Um, all right. So here is Eat Happy Grub. Um, it's squeezable fun for the whole family. So I would say first things first, you have a great explanation of what it is that you do on the last image of this like header. Uh, but I didn't know that it was squeezable pancake mix until I literally saw this picture. It could be that people come to your website knowing, but it, it might help, uh, to just change that, um, hero component to say like squeezable pancake mix fun for the whole family something along those lines. Um, mealtime has never been more exciting. It looks like these are your four uh, sort of flavor options. One interesting thing that you could do with the with these four flavor options is really make them the showcase of your mobile navigation specifically. So people can immediately go and shop their flavor from the navigation versus going to the collections page and seeing those four flavors in like different bundle sizes um, would require, you know, a little bit of redesign on your navigation, but could, but could help with overall like conversion on different flavors specifically. And you've got a lot of real estate to work with in this navigation. Uh, another general tip on just overall navigation is but even if you have multiple different collections, different kinds of products, adding a CTA button down at the bottom of your navigation, you have that sort of free space. Um, and you would have, you know, more of a CTA in your in your desktop experience as well. So a lot of traffic is coming to your site from mobile, really adding that uh CTA on this nav that could just take you to the overall like shop all page even. Um, I love that you display the number of reviews and the uh, sort of like the star rating. It looks like it's getting cut off. It could be just like the desk, the mobile experience that I'm showcasing on like desktop. Um, but I would say that that font or that size could also be a lot smaller in general. Um, it doesn't have to, you know, be the main focal point of your shop all page. It could really just, you know, help be a little bit more of like a driving factor into clicking that add to cart button. Um, love that there are bundles. Tui tui. Um, all right, let's click into a bundle. So there's a four pack. Um, so similar to what we saw in Medley Home, I think it was, or CD CBD Combites, um, having you know your product images be a little bit thinner so that you can peek out the other side and sort of scroll as the experience feels a little bit more intuitive on mobile. Right now, this is these product images are taking up a ton of space um, and they don't really have to take up this space below, like on this product page specifically. Um, they can really even be, have, uh, you know, like those small circle indicators that there are multiple images that you can sort of swipe through on your phone. Super intuitive. I don't think that will reduce your overall conversion rate at all. Um, One-time purchase, subscribe and save. I would say um, 
these selectors are pretty pretty big. They're taking up a good amount of space. You could probably make these side by side options that are a little bit, you know, bigger to help with that, you know, fat fat, fat thumb experience. Um, but you know, they're taking up a good amount of vertical real estate, and that's something that's super important to like optimize for on mobile. Um, interesting that you're doing that. It's buy with that buy with Prime seems like the the biggest like CTA call out here. Do you want people to buy with Prime or do you want people to buy directly from your site? Because this add to cart button gets a little lost for sure. Um, I don't know if this here is necessary because I know that I chose the whole wheat four pack. Um, so I would say that this could even be removed and your add to cart button could be pushed up even further on this page. Now let's see if I add to cart. Cool. Um, taxes and shipping calculated at checkout. Okay. Um, but and then there's no, you know, cross sell upsell option here. Totally um, an area of opportunity for you to have, you know, just a little bit more real estate um, and capitalize on that versus having something be a little bit more on the um, empty side of things. There's a time and a place for white space for sure, but maybe not necessarily in the cart. Um, cool. Love the. Um, reviews it could be really interesting overall these seem these are like super staged pictures and they're really really high quality if you have a lot of families who are you know submitting UGC um, by being like this is what our family used your product for like we had our you know uh usual weekend dinner and this is what we made incorporating those into the PDPs could be uh super super helpful especially because this is a gorgeous pancake but I know I personally wouldn't be able to make that with a squeezy bottle regardless of how easy it could be so um I like that you're trying to showcase the overall creativity it could help to have you know a little bit more of the uh user generated content sprinkled in whether it's on your home page or on your PDPs um, let's just scroll through the homepage. It doesn't look like this carousel dynamically changes. So it's kind of up to me if I want to uh, not like change the images. If that's the case, I would say stick with one of these images and test the other three and see which one drives the most conversion rate. If you're not sure which one converts best and you don't want people to see all four because it's not dynamically rotating. Easy as one, two, three. I really like this. It takes up a lot of space. Um, so I think it could potentially be shortened or even, you know, in a like horizontal fill up with water, et cetera, like shake it up and then squeeze and have fun. Um, but I do really like that you have a, how it works sort of section. Um, I think that there could even be a CTA at the bottom of the section. That's like start squeezing now or something along those lines of like an actionable CTA, uh, after you taught people the best way to use your product shop now. Awesome. And then, yeah, so these, um, this could just be the desktop experience. It may not be um, what really ex is the experience on mobile, but these three quotes could be in, in a carousel as well so that you, you know, aren't, you aren't creating scroll fatigue. There's only so much that someone wants to scroll on their phone that's a smaller screen. Um, so really condensing the content that you have. Makes total sense. Pushing to social sign up for updates. Cool. Um, if you wanted to showcase even these badges, I think you're doing a really good job of, you know, creating the real estate for them. This could be interesting to test out on your PDPs, higher up on your homepage, just taking these four small icons and seeing where you want to place them, see how that increases or uh, impacts overall conversion rate. Cool. Can do one more. Yeah, let's do one more. All right. Let's see, is it, let me stop, stop sharing my screen just in case I was only sharing one, one view there. Um, all right, we can do, do we wanna do desktop and mobile experience? Let's just do mobile. I've been liking that. Okay. Um, so it looks like there are two uh, CTAs kind of happening up here at the top. Um, I would say choose one. That's a lot of like vertical real estate that you're taking up with, you know, your free shipping and your contact information. If that, if people contact your team a lot, having that live in the footer is not something that will detract from people reaching out to your customer service team. Generally people know like, Hey, if I want to get in contact with someone, I can use this chat box right here. Um, or I can scroll all the way down and you can, you know, 
place your care team information there. Um, it does look like this image is a little bit squished on mobile, but that again could just be the desktop experience on mobile. And it looks like the main CTA you're trying to push here is to subscribe to emails. If that is the case, subscribe to our emails is not a super uh, enticing sort of copy for this CTA. It could be, you know, get DIY tips every week, you know, become the best DIYer you can be, et cetera. Um, and then this subtext could have that social proof of, you know, X thousand DIYers, like get our tips every week to help them create new crafts. <laughs> um, but copy does make a huge amount of difference on your website. So try and make it as actionable as you possibly can. Uh, as, as well as color, if you want to test out the, a different color for this module, if you want to test out, you know, having the arrow button be a different color. Um, color and copy are the two biggest ways that you can impact overall conversion rate without feeling like you have to test every single element on your website. I do like that you have bestsellers, but it looks like you are showcasing some sold out products, which is super interesting. Um, we can see if there is a notify me when available. Yes, there is. Love that. That was going to be my suggestion. Um, if you do have, if you do showcase out of stock items, always make sure that you have like a notify me when available sort of experience. Um, looking at sort of the PDPs, we are, are seeing it in like different kind of lights I like that the packaging um again you know i because i can scroll on mobile i would remove uh this section and just like make sure that you are keeping the real estate on the page as centered around conversion as possible this copy here the like poor pay in for interest free payments this should live below the add to cart button. This is not important for me to know in order to add to cart. Um, and it's specific to shop pay and it's taking up a ton of a ton of information or a ton of real estate here, but where it does not need to be. Um, I would say you can use this real estate instead to do like three or four bulleted value props that are specific to each product. So if you have your product page um, and you have, you know, copy like this, make it a smaller font, move it below the add to cart button and use that real estate instead to showcase, you know, X number of parts, um, you know, <laughs> mini rooms, real LED lights um, and tiny furniture and accessories. You have those here and you could even, you know, just take those main points of like mini rooms, red, real LED lights, tiny furniture and accessories, Sam's study. And if people want to learn more about that, then they can scroll and see all of this information. But that just like showcases really quickly the overall like information that I would want to know about this product. Scrolling down, really cool that you have a video. It could be interesting to incorporate this in the product images as well. Sometimes people incorporate images while you're scrolling through um, product images on a PDP. Could be interesting to see how that impacts overall conversion rate, testing it here versus in your product images. Um, and no reviews yet, but more information on your model kits. I always like a, you may, you may also like section. Uh, this could also be like a recently viewed section as well, testing out each of those different experiences could be interesting. Um, again, we see that there is a sale item here, but it doesn't tell me that it's literally, I can do this math, $20 off. Uh, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more dramatic, you could say like what percent that is off in the sale and maybe even changing the color of the updated sale price. So it really draws attention to the fact that this thing is on sale, grab it while you can. Red usually drives that sort of urgency. Um, and then free shipping on all orders over 35. So let's see how much, oh, this one sold out. Let's find a, cool. This one would be over 20, $35. Okay. Cool. Again, um, I like that there are flags that you're incorporating onto these collection pages. Test out the color of that sale, uh, flag. Could it be blue? Could it be red? Could it be green? Um, what? different colors can drive more urgency and, you know, getting, getting rid of your sales stock so you can fill your inventory with something else. If I add something to cart, it doesn't tell me that I qualify for free shipping. I would love for it too, um, because then I, you know, feel as though 
I've like, I did it. Um, and anything else that I add is just like icing on the cake. Or if I don't meet that threshold, I'll feel like, okay, I need, I need to add more to my cart. Cool. Um, Perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we'll go back to the presentation and then we'll get back to Sarah in a little bit. So here are actual results from experiments Sarah has run on our platform. So I will toot her horn and say that, you know, 20% bumps on conversion rate on, on page conversion rates is pretty substantial. Here are actual results of nutrient making websites around 40% faster, um, taking off, you know, 1.9 to 2.2 seconds on average. Um, so these are actual in the uh, blue is measured by is this traffic that went through Nostra, and then the control is the traffic that didn't go through Nostra. You can see how that has an impact. You'll see 90, you know, not every store gets a 90 plus performance score, but a lot do. Um, we've got big companies that use the software doing hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars a year and small companies that do a million bucks a year um, using the software. My favorite customer testimonial is a company that's entire purpose is to just buy Shopify stores and make them more profitable. And they essentially buy Shopify stores, onboard them into Nostra, onto Nostra, and then they become extremely, uh, you know, they, they grow a ton. Um, and so that's, a, you know, part of their playbook. Um, other clients have seen 600% increases in opt-ins. Other clients have seen 251% increases in click-through rates. We were voted the most innovative e-commerce technology. And if you'd like the same setup and you have at least 20,000 sessions per month, um, if you've less than that, it just isn't quite worth your time yet. Um, so we want to save you time. But if you have at least 20,000 sessions a month, we have sites that do, you know, millions of sessions a month, um, but at least 20,000 sessions a month, uh, we will, and you're qualified, we'll install a notion on your site. And we're offering case study based pricing for limited for a limited time and waiving the setup fee for, for early action table takers. And you get a CRO consultation with Sarah. Um, so that's pretty awesome. I dropped the link in the chat earlier to do this. That sounds good. We also do case study based pricing. So you get a pretty special discount off of Nostra if you allow us to make a case study out of your site and we can guarantee an increase in conversion. So if you don't get an increase in conversions, you know, you don't have to pay us. Um, so we do a 30 day free trial, 60 day refund window after that. So theoretically, if your conversion rate is enough, three X or not three X isn't up to the point where you, uh, you know, you feel like the, it's worth it. Then you just get a refund, no questions asked. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And you get Sarah to set up the experiments for you. So you don't have to really do much. So if you want, please book a call now, case study based pricing, set up the wave, guarantee that increasing conversions and we'll prove the results. And we'll show you exactly how much conversions and our lowest plans are started as low as $750 a month. Um, here's a quote from one of our sites. Um, they are having a great time using Nostra. Another one, um, you know, they just onboarded. They had a super fast site. Their conversion rate went up a bunch. Their traffic went up. Um, another one, wow, what an amazing experience. You know, really went up significantly. And so, yeah, that's that's what we do. I'm going to take a look at a couple websites and then I'm going to hand it back over to Sarah. Um, so what we're going to look at is what Nostra does is we make the server response time between 50 and 100 milliseconds. And when you do that, you get your entire page to load around 10x faster or not 10x, I'm sorry, 40% faster. We're going to make it go from 500 down to 50 and that'll make the rest of the page load um, around 40% faster. So if we go into one of the pages here, we should see seven, generally Shopify stores are between 300 and 800 milliseconds. So 744 milliseconds. Uh, we can go to another page here. Um, we are gonna see 857 milliseconds. So again, especially for uh, you know companies based in the US, you're gonna get around a 40% speed up. Companies based outside the US, you get around a 300% speed up, which increases conversion rate by like absurd amounts, like 50, 80% just in 30 minutes. Um, so here's one site we'll show you here. Another site, oh, I was going to run in that Lighthouse score, but the Lighthouse scores reflect this. Um, but I haven't been to these sites before, so hopefully I'm wrong. And some of them have super fast sites, but I haven't come prepared. So 392 milliseconds speed. Um, you know, we're looking at 444 milliseconds speed. And so now we can look at a site that has Nostra on it. So you click on a page, you're seeing between you know, 181 milliseconds. Let's say if we go to another page, we're seeing 200 milliseconds. And this is with my caching on my browser disabled, 140 milliseconds. 
you know, super, super fast. And we'll look at the lighthouse score on this site. 76 before Nostra, they were at a 30. Um, and this is on mobile on desktop. I think I showed earlier, they were in the 90s. Um, so we'll go back to another site here. And I'm just showing that all Shopify sites are roughly the same in the um, 300 to or 300 to 800 millisecond range. So we go to a page here. Oops. Oh, I guess it doesn't load. Well, we'll go to a different page here. Huh, none of these pages are loading. Well, there might be other things to work on. Um, so that was a fairly fast load time, actually, um, but it wasn't a shopping page, which is why it was pretty fast. Um, so we will look at another site here uh, where we're going to see load times in this similar, you know, 400. Oh, these are weird sites. When you click the buttons, nothing happens. So I'm going to look at another site. And then I'm going to hand it back to Sarah after this. And I've got to jump, but Sarah can do um, some consultations for the next uh, for the next 10 minutes. So 398 milliseconds. So again, all roughly the same. So I'm going to hand it back to Sarah. But as you can see, 490 milliseconds versus 50 to 100 milliseconds, maybe 150 milliseconds on the high end. Um, it can be uh, pretty substantial impact. So Sarah, I'm going to pass it back to you. Drop the link in the chat. And then I've got to head out, but um, it'll be all yours. Cool, sure thing. Um, all right, let's wrap it up with maybe uh, this site here. All right, so again, um, we are only focusing on mobile experience. Um, I'm noticing that they have a rotating sort of announcement bar here. Um, it doesn't look like the announcement bar is actionable. So even if you have, you know, free domestic shipping over $150, having a shop now button or a shop now text that's underlined that takes you to their collections page, uh, make those announcement bars just a little bit more actionable can be super, super helpful and impacts your overall conversion rate as well. Um, seeing that there is this rotating uh, header here. I like that all of the CTA buttons are not just shop now, but they are like specific to the collection that they're sort of um, profiling. If you have a lot of collections, let's see. They have a lot of different brands, but they don't have the collections really showcased in their navigation. Could be interesting to test out, especially if you have, you know, very specific kinds of uh, partnerships or collaborations like they do, obviously, with Batman. Uh, we do have a shop category, and I really, really like how this is smaller. Um, it doesn't take up a ton of space, but I know exactly where I can go to navigate um, to each uh, different kind of pen. Um, and then up to 25% off select items. I can't tell if these are actionable or not, or if they're just announcement sort of modules. Um, so if this were like, let's click it and see. Okay, yeah. So I would want it to say, you know, like shop now. Um, these collection pages, the uh, product names look a little bit large on mobile. That could just be, you know, the overall mobile experience, but it doesn't actually look like this collections page is responsive. Um, so it looks like, you know, these four pens could use this similar um, formatting here. Uh, so this looks great. What does this plus sign do? Just automatically adds to cart. Super interesting. Um, when we are looking at this cart, this is way too many payment options. Um, display these in the checkout experience, but not the cart experience so that you can really influence that like cart to checkout conversion rate. But this is a little bit overwhelming. Um, if I had multiple things in my cart, I wouldn't even be able to see them because of all of the different checkout options that are being displayed here. Um, so really I would just keep it simple with checkout and then display all these different payment options in the like checkout window. Let's close that back up. Um, we have some products here that are on sale. I really like that you're showcasing um, how much money I'm saving and calling attention to them with different colors. Let's just click into a PDP. All right. 
Um, so I would say first things first is bring the product name down like near the price. Uh, I could forget what I'm looking at with it all the way up there and I scroll and I forget where I am. Uh, so product name and price should always be like listed closely together and under those product images so that you can really focus on exactly what uh, the product looks like uh, and then recognize the name and the price of the, of the product that you are looking at. Scrolling, I like that you can each like image peeks out from the other side. Um, a lot of really high quality images here. It could be a really interesting test to try out UGC, someone holding the pen, someone, you know, with the pen on their work, work desk. Um, product features is interesting that it's in sort of this drop down. So if you are sort of strapped for space on mobile, this is a really interesting way where you can still showcase, you know, the product description and product features uh, without you know taking up too much too much space. Um, and again, this buy with shop pay is more apparent than the add to cart button. Uh, I don't know if that's on purpose. If you really want to drive people to use shop pay, I know that it's like a super easy way to do kind of like a one click checkout experience. Um, but I would test out you know also showcasing the value of just adding to cart, uh, especially when. Uh, you're selling a higher ticket item like a, a pretty expensive pen. People may just want to, you know, be, people. your buyer may just be a little bit more traditional and want to call attention to the add to cart experience. Um, I can also pick up, which is interesting. It didn't ask where I was. So this could be just in California. So this might, it might be interesting to just showcase this module for visitors on your site coming in from California, because I'm in Colorado. This doesn't really apply to me much. Um, and it's not like a value prop to me personally. If anything, it got my hopes up. And then I was like, wait, I can't, I can't pick this up in, in person. Um, shipping information, free shipping on $150. Um, okay. That could be interesting also to have right below the cart is that like shipping information, even though it is also in a rotating um, announcement bar, could just be a good reminder to have near the add to cart experience. I love that it says that it's in stock. So I have two, let's get four, five. Okay, we hit the free shipping threshold. If there is free shipping, call out in the card experience. I either can't see it or there isn't one. Um, it could be great to have that sort of progress bar as people are hitting that, um, that free shipping threshold. Cool, let's go back to maybe the homepage really quick um, and see what the social proof here looks like, if any. This section here of like our classic brand recommendations, uh, the sort of two by three, I guess, uh, experience here is kind of taking up a lot of vertical real estate. I would say, you know, find a way that you could shorten this, whether you want it to be, you know, two by two and be able to scroll horizontally, uh, but seeing, you know, um, two, three, four, five, six pens, um, that all are, you know, part of this uh, classic brand recommendation is kind of just a lot to see all in one place, especially on a non-collections page. Okay. Must have stationary notebooks. Could be really interesting to showcase stationary notebooks in the card experience as add-ons or sort of like creating bundles with stationary notebooks and a pen uh, and testing that out to see if you wanted to, if you want to run experiments to increase your average order value. Could be really interesting. I'm not seeing social proof. So there are some pens I believe that have, you know, reviews associated with them. Uh, could be great to have just the addition of those reviews somewhere on this homepage, whether it's, you know, thousands of customers um, trust us or, you know, X number of pens sold uh, could just really help with, you know, the legitimacy of the business itself. And I do like that you can shop by brand here. It could be one interesting to make these uh, a little bit more actional with, you know, shop now, explore, whatever on each of these cards, um, but also pushing this up further on the top. If you're like a brand reseller, showcasing what brands you do have on your homepage so that people can like really easily navigate to any of these could be really interesting to have, you know, further up on the page versus individual pens from 
or individual products from one of those brands. Let's see, I do like that these, these collection pages, like especially up at the top here, there's not a lot of copy going on. It's really getting right to the point. Again, with just making sure that these um, listings in your collections page are, uh, you know, responsive on mobile. I'm sure it looks great. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't respond well to the smaller screen size of like a mobile phone unless I make it a little bit on the wider side. Um, and then featured collection here. Interesting to see uh, color selectors. So let's click into this. Um, and it's super interesting to see showcasing the sold out colors. Uh, it doesn't look like they have a notify me when available selector. So that could be really interesting to have as well. Uh, we're coming up right on time at the end of this webinar. So I want to be mindful of all of your time. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you are interested in Nostra, um, Arthur left the Calendly to book some time or and his email in the chat. And I hope you all have a great rest of your Friday. Thanks all. See ya.